Amados irmãos, amadas irmãs. Dear brothers and dear sisters, friends, welcome to one more tutorial of the daily food. We are in the series, The Church, Ground and Pillar of the Truth. The title of this volume, it is, The Age of the Seven Spirits. The author is our dear brother, Pedro Tong. Now we got to week three in this volume, whose title is, Things That Must Shortly take place. This week, the daily food corresponds to message 22 ministered by Brother Pedro. And once again, the author shows us that we are living the end times. And for this moment, God has his word for us a special word, a word that really moves us, that prepare us more and more to fulfill the will of God, to cooperate with Him in the advance of His work and fulfill His will. It is a time that we must, we must thank God for it, because we are living in this time, It's a time of completion, consummation. So, after this age, uh, we believe that we'll have the Lord's coming. So, the Lord's coming is very cl close. And the Lord is opening to us in this context of First and Second Timothy, which is the basis of our study of the church, of the ground and pillar of the truth. He's also opening to us the book of Revelation, a book that speaks about the things of the end. And I praise God for this wonderful book. Today, I'll be following with you the sequence of verses. I want to be able to read them all, the, all the verses that Brother Pedro read and mentioned in this message this week. But we will be looking to follow the sequence of the biblical texts indicated by our brother. So, here in Revelation chapter 1, we have re the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things with which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Praise God, right? Blessed, verse 3, verse three blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So here it is what we made a comment on in the beginning. The Lord is opening his revelation to us, the book of Revelation to us. We are living today the end times. In verse 11, we read, He said, 1.11, uh, What do you see? Write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Tatara, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Odyssea. It's interesting that here it says to send the seven churches and then name after cities, indicating that the church needs no other name. It must take only the name of the city. The church actually It is composed of all brothers and sisters, all children of God all over the earth in its universal aspect. And its practical manifestation is in each city. So today I am in Sao Paulo, meeting with the saints in the church in Sao Paulo. So here we have the names. You have no need to put another name. People require that, right, that there, there's a name, but the Bible does not give us this indication. So the name of the church, it is the name of the city. That's the base 
of our oneness, the ground of our oneness is a solid ground, and on top of the this ground, we can receive the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be revealed through His letters. Uh, he can open His heart to His churches on top of this ground of oneness. That is, all the people of God is represented here in this seven cities. They were cities of Asia Minor. So the churches were established here. Let us get to uh, Revelation chapter 4 now, verse 1. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. So I thank God the Spirit wants to reveal to us not only what was what we have seen this far, but what will happen, which must take place after this. John was a servant of God used by him to bring this revelation to us. We have specially three servants that God used over the course of history of humanity, we can put it this way, to bring his revelation, to reveal his plan to these people. One of them is Moses. Moses in the Old Testament received the revelation of the entire plan of God, the whole economy of God, the whole purpose of God revealed to him. For that, God invited Moses to go up to a mountain. He opened, he went up to Mount Sinai, and there God gave him the laws, the Ten Commandments, and that was the ground for all the people of Israel to follow and walk according to the will of God. But not only that, God gave Moses also a model of the tabernacle, which indicated representing the God's move in the Old Testament. The tabernacle would be pitched in the wilderness and then representing the work of God among his people there in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, we have the Apostle Paul that also received the revelation of the whole economy in the New Testament, the New Testament economy. And I praise God, right, that Paul, in a faithful way, he conveyed all these, all this word, all this burden, all this vision to us. So God used the Apostle Paul very much, and he is using this far. Uh, but God needed to reveal something more. Things that refer, refer to our living, not only today, but also after all these things. That is why he raised the Apostle John. John, he was raised by the Lord to give us the revelation for the end times. That is why we are seeing the book of Revelation. And John really, he went up and he was able to have these visions here. And we will enjoy them over this week and we will continue enjoying it. And the author, to help us understand better the revelations we have received in Revelation, he led us to, he took us to Psalms, Psalms chapter 2, and there it is a approach that the author wants to help us to be using it, the, law, the author is using it to help us see how the book of Revelation is precious. Many people are afraid of this book, do not, do not even open it out of fear, but it is quite precious, actually. And for us to better understand the contents of this book, we saw there in Psalms chapter 2, and for us, Psalms was just a book of poetry. A while ago, even a while ago, we considered Psalms a poetical book, 
right? Poetic book, but actually it's also prophetical with words that were revealed by God in a prophetic sense, things that would happen, things that are happening. And in Psalms chapter 2 we read, Why do nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying. This the subject of opposition, rebellion against God is it is old. It began with Lucifer, it was an angel of light. Actually, he became Satan, God's adversary, God's opposing one. And actually, he saw, he stirred up men to oppose God. The first great man who opposed God, uh, stirred up by Satan, was Nimrod. In Genesis 10, we see that. So from that point forward, man be, uh, tried to live in a foreign way to God, having a government under a government that was not the divine authority, the, the authority of God. So then, another authority was established, a parallel, an evil authority was uh, the, the authority of Satan. And the whole earth today also has this trend, trend of going against God, the, the kings, the governors, the prince, the rulers, they usually try to live an absolute way as if they were gods and despising the authority of God. So, the Lord needs to put this earth in order. And then in verse 3, we read, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Look what Satan led men to do. To try to get away, disconnected from God, to have a life independent from God. Let us break their bonds in pieces, cast away their cords from us. Considered man was in bonds, so they wanted them to break those bonds in pieces. So this is a word of great warning for us. On verse 6, Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Satan wanted to do something, to exercise authority, but God already anointed a king. The Lord was already anointed from the beginning, from the eternity. I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Still in his divinity, the Lord had been anointed king on his holy hill of Zion. On his ho my holy hill of Zion. And then in verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. When did this happen? In time. We can say that this happened after the death and resurrection of the Lord. This word became reality. On the one hand, he had been anointed in eternity to be king. But in time, as a man, he was anointed also. Before, he was the only begotten son of the Father. Now he became the first begotten son of the Father. And that is why we were begotten after him, after his human living on earth, of his death and his resurrection, he became the Spirit, and today we received his life. We who believed, we received his life in us. We received it inside of us, his life. So I praise God, the Lord is wonderful. Satan has no chance. He wants to have a position, but... From the beginning, God had already determined who this king would be, and in time, he appointed that. He consumed his purpose. He fulfilled his purpose. And then in verse 8, we read, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance at, in the ends of the earth for your possession. 
your God the Father says to the Son, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. And we see here that you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with, with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest be, he be angry and you perish in the way. Kiss the Son here represents total submission. People need to get to this point. The kings of the earth need to get to this point of total submission for the Son as King. Why? When His wrath is kindled a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in Him. This word here we can say that we see in Revelation also the details. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, let us open it. I'm following with you exactly the order of verses. Here we read of this week, the verses of this week. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Praise God. We saw in Psalms 2, we, here we have the confirmation and, and the fulfillment of this prophecy in Revelation. Now let us take a look at another psalm, Psalms 110. The Spirit is also opening it up to us, using Brother Brother John to help us a lot to receive light in this portion of the Word. In Psalms 110, from verse 1, we can read it. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. We know this is possible not by our might, by our capacity, because God wants to use us to cooperate with Him to fulfill this word, to put all the enemies under His footstool. This is possible because today we have the action of the seven spirits. That is, the spirit is operating in its completion, in its form, and its total strength. Now we have the Spirit operating, and it is totally possible the fulfillment of this word here. We must allow the Spirit to operate in us. We can surrender ourselves to Him, give ourselves to Him, let the Lord to do this work in our life with full strength. Let us not be resistant to the Spirit's action. Verse 2, The Lord shall send a rod of your strength out of Zion. Again, we have the rod of the Lord's strength, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. This rod of your strength that the Lord will send are actually the overcomers. We will see from Zion the overcomers will are being produced in the church. The church has been produced in this way. And the Lord will have the rod of his strength through his overcomers. Then in verse 3 we read, Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. The day of your power. Or in the day of your calling. The beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. You have the dew of your youth, and the holy mountains more than the, the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. This is 
the New King James Version. Now we are reading this more often. So the Lord wants to bring forth today. We are living at this moment of dawn where the first uh, daylight are shining. The dawn is coming. The first daylight are breaking. You have the dew of your, the womb of the morning. You have the dew of your youth to bring forth the army of overcomers, of holy youth. And we have on verse 4, Thus far we spoke about the Lord as a king to reign, to govern, and so on and so forth. Both in Psalms 2 and Psalms 110 and verse 1 through 3. But from verse 4, we have a very precious portion which helped us a lot and is helping us a lot. Will be helping us in this week. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of of Melchizedek. This is confirmed in Hebrews 7, verse 24, onward. So here we have the Lord as a priest. He actually is our high priest forever. What does that mean? The Lord is caring for us. Some, some, we have somebody caring for us. We have a group of overcomers to fight with him. On the other, he's caring for us. Be in peace. Do not be troubled. He's caring for you. Sometimes we feel a little bit weak uh, with some weaknesses for one situation or the other. But be in peace for this high priest is caring for us. He has... He is a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. He knows you. He knows who you are. He can have a sympathy on you. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. We see that in the battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16, verse 16. The Lord, he shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall execute the heads of many countries. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he shall lift up the head. I really enjoy this word here. Drink of the brook by the wayside. It's the overcomers. He drinks of this brook. That is, the overcomers will be like uh, comfort, a support, a uh, backup, a strength. For the Lord, this is very rich. You want to be those co-workers of the Lord to get to this point of cooperation with Him, that He may have in us His refuge. Though the time of battle may we may we be there together with Him. Now let us get back to the book of Revelation, chapter one, from verse four. Let us get back there. So here. We have who is the author of Revelation? John, right? Everyone knows John wrote the book of Revelation and so on and so forth. But here we have the revelation of the true authorship, true authorship of this revelation of the book of Revelation. It says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits who are before his throne. So who is the author of Revelation, of the book of Revelation? God himself, the prime God. He who is, right, who was and who is to come. He's our God eternal God, this God here, he is the Father, the I Am, mentioned in Exodus 13, 14, right? When Moses asked that God, when Pharaoh asked, who are you, who are, I'm going to say to him, and he say to him, the I Am sent him. So actually he is, he's eternal. From eternity to eternity, here, this is our solid foundation. 
in our living today, in our Christian living, in our church living, you have the solid foundation. It's God that goes from eternity to eternity. He upholds you, upholds me. He upholds His church, upholds His work on earth. We have the solid foundation. There's no problem. He's before all things. He is eternal. He is marvelous, our God, right? Then he goes on to say, and from the seven spirits who, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, here the order changed, right? The Father, Son, and the Spirit, here it changed, because we are at the time of the action of the Spirit. At the end times, it is the time of the Spirit to operate in a stronger and intense way. With full strength that we saw, right? So from the seven spirits, and the spirit here says that who are before his throne, that is, they are a servant. They are there to serve. See how precious this is. This uh, traces back to Genesis 24, where Abraham sent his servant to go after a bride his servant to go after a bride for his son. Well, the servant, the elderly son of Abraham's house, actually represents the spirit. So he was there under the service of the father to get a bride for the son. So the spirit here is in this position of serving and from Jesus Christ. We cannot forget the Son, even though it is mentioned here thirdly, but here says, from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. The Son, He's everything. He's the reason of our ex existence. He's the reason of the church life. It was because of Him, of His submission, His obedience. Thorough obedience to the church was brought forth, so we owe everything to Him. Everything exists because of Him. He's a faithful witness, that is, toward God, He is the faithful witness. And also toward the church, He is the firstborn from the dead. And toward the nations, toward the world, toward the kings, He is the ruler over the kings of the earth. So this son, he's everything. He is simply wonderful. We cannot forget him. In a while, I'll be mentioning to you some biblical portions that lead us to appreciate more and more the work of the Son that He accomplished for us. To Him who loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. This means that on the one hand we are kings, on the other we are here to serve him. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold his coming with clouds and every eye will see him even they who pierce him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. For so every eye will see him, we we'll see in Acts 9, in Matthew uh, 26, 64, you can read it afterwards, carefully. All, all, every eye will see him, even those who trespass him, will see him, uh, who pierce him. Uh, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty. Here we see how the Lord is great. He began it all. He is the beginning of all. He is the Alpha. He is also the last one, the Omega. He will complete and finish all the work that He began. In Hebrews 1, you see the details, the value, the value of the work of the so precious Lord, who He is in fact. He is exact expression of the Father. Colossians 1 says that He is everything. Before everything in Him, every, all things consist. He is the first, the last. So this Lord is wonderful. Now let us get to the another portion. This week, which speaks of the seven great visions that we find in the Revelation. First understand the book of Revelation. 
we need to have a realization that he brings us four great visions. The first vision, it is of Christ and his humanity caring for the churches. This is quite important, Christ caring for the church. He does that in his humanity. This is from chapter 1 through chapter 3. This is a section dealing with this subject in Revelation, chapters 1 through 3. The second great vision refers to the destiny of the world. What will happen to the world goes from chapter 4 through 16 in Revelation. The third great vision it is of the great Babylon. How God will deal with this situation, with this mixture, with this uh, deviation, with this idolatry, with this condition that came over and subdued the people, came upon the people, a religion mixed with politics, the world, all of that, the Lord will deal with that from chapter 17 through 20. Uh, we have the New Jerusalem, the New Heaven and New Earth. Chapters 21 and 22. The other section in this week, you can see here in verse 19, Revelation 1, 19. Here we read, Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. Here we have a task would be Accomplished in three steps. To write the things that you have seen. We'll see in a while what are those things. The things which are. It refers to the church, right? The church today, it is ongoing. And the things which will take place after this. Let us see verse 9. He says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, who was on the island that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So here we have first thing that the author helped us to see it is that John, he does not represent himself as someone hierarchically higher than the other saints. He presents himself as a brother, your brother. So in the end of the first century, the church history, we saw men trying to uh, emphasize titles and put positions in the church. And here in John, he makes it clear that we are brothers. There's no such a thing as hierarchy, fighting for position, for title in the church. In the church, we are all brothers and sisters. We must take a good care of one another, to be submissive to one another, to care with great affection, and a companion. Where? Uh, in the tribulation. Praise God, we have companions who cooperate with us, people who help us in moments of tribulation. But this tribulation here, it's not because of our mistakes, of our errors. It's because we want to do the will of God, because we want to cooperate with God and to fulfill His will. And we go through many situations of tribulation and kingdom. Many people do not give uh, do not matter about the kingdom, but praise God, the Lord revealed that to us. Before, we emphasize that the church life has no end in itself. We want to reign with the Lord and to offer Him a kingdom, a government, to reestablish His government on earth. And uh, here in Jesus, in endurance with Jesus, we, we see that we have many difficulties. Sometimes we have lack of patience, lack of perseverance. We must have uh, endurance in Jesus to be calm, to be patient. Let us cooperate with one another. Let us be subject to one another. Let us be simple and obedient to the prophetic word the Lord is giving us to do the will of Him 
Let us go out, contact people, preach the gospel. May I pray for you, taking book for them, leaving the word in their hands. We have to do that in a persevering way. Many things will go against us. Uh, at all times, we are attacked by Satan, by the enemy, and by the world. So we need, in this moment of endurance and care for one another, in Jesus, I was on the island that is called Patmos. The world has nothing to do with us. On the contrary, the world wants to see our destruction. So here we see someone who was exiled. The world is like that. If you are well received and welcomed by the world, be careful. Because if you have this appreciation in the world, then you are of the world. But when we are the Lord's, the world actually hates us. We see that clearly in the Gospel of John. So we see someone exiled in the island of Patmos because of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit. This is very important for us to learn to live in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, uh, uh, I am, and what do you see? Write in a book and send it to some churches. We read that in the beginning. And then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. So here we see. In a moment of the intense darkness, what do we have? Seven golden lampstands. That is, the churches are shining in this world of darkness. May we be part of this group that is shining bright, bright in this world. In the, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the son of men cloth with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His hat and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. We see the high priest caring for us. Verse 14. His hat and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. Fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Who are these seven stars? Out of his mouth went a sharp, two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Sun shining in its strength. So today it is the time, dear brothers and sisters, for the churches to have people as shining stars in the Lord's hands. Not with title or position, for, but for people to look at you, think that you are this or that, but for you to be those who shine in this period. It, it is quite important of much darkness. Try to... Uh, pervade on people. And when I saw him, I fell at his hand, his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last time. He, he is the one who cared for us, and he, from the beginning, he will care for us. Uh, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write the things which you have seen. We saw that on verse 19. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. Seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Very good. So this word that the Lord revealed to his servant for him to convey to an other servants they, they must be the ones who take the word, the church for the churches. So we have to be those people in the churches who are shining today, not be arguing, discussing, quarreling uh, for title, for position once again. But we are once again helped to see that. Let us serve the Lord in simplicity, with sincerity, with purity of heart, let us consecrate ourselves to him more and more and allow him to do his work among us. Why it is important, the first part here, that what John saw, what John saw 
is a determining factor for the things which are, which actually are the things that we are living today in the church life. And what we are living today, it is important for the things that will take place because we are the ones who will cooperate with God to complete this age, to complete actually all things. So the Lord needs to take a good care for us. The church today is being very well cared for. Uh, the high priest is walking among us. He's preparing us to cooperate more and more with him. So I praise God for this word. And may God bless you all. Jesus is Lord.